please sit or kneel as we continue in prayer. We say together the prayer of preparation. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. And we just take a moment of silence to search our hearts before we make our confession to God. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us. Forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please stand if that's comfortable for you, and we'll say the Gloria together. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. And the collect for today, the 15th Sunday after Trinity. God, who in generous mercy sent the Holy Spirit upon your church, in the burning fire of your love. Grant that your people may be fervent in the fellowship of the gospel, that always abiding in you, they may be found steadfast in faith and active in service. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please sit down for our first reading. The reading is taken from Jeremiah chapter 32. This is the word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord in the tenth year of Zebekiah, king of Judah, which was the eighteenth year of Nebuchadnezzar. The army of the king of Babylon was then besieging Jerusalem, and Jeremiah the prophet was confined in the courtyard of the guard in the royal palace of Judah. Now Zedekiah, king of Judah, had imprisoned him there, saying, Why do you prophesy as you do? You say, This is what the Lord says. I am about to give this city into the hands of the king of Babylon, and he will capture it. Jeremiah said, The word of the Lord came to me. Hanamel, son of Shalom, your uncle is going to come to you and say, Buy my field at Anathoth, because, as nearest relative, it is your right and duty to buy it. Then just as the Lord had said, my cousin Hanamel came to me in the courtyard of the guard and said, Buy my field in Anathoth in the territory of Benjamin since it is your right to redeem it and possess it, buy it for yourself. I knew that this was the word of the Lord, so I bought the field at Ananoth from my cousin Hanamel and weighed out for him seventeen shekels of silver. I signed and sealed the deed, had it witnessed and weighed out the silver on the scales. I took the deed of purchase. The sealed copy contained the terms and conditions as well as the unsealed copy. And I gave this deed to Baruch, son of Neriah, the son of Messiah, in the presence of my cousin Hanamel, and of the witnesses who had signed the deed, and of all the Jews sitting in the courtyard of the guard. In their presence I gave Baruch these instructions. This is what the Lord Almighty the God says. 
take these documents, both the sealed and unsealed copies of the deed of purchase, and put them in a clay jar so that they will last for a long time. For this is what the Lord Almighty, the God of Israel, says, houses, fields and vineyards will gain be bought in this land. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. second reading is taken from 1 Timothy chapter 6 verses 6 to 19. But godliness with contentment is great gain, for we brought nothing into the world and we can take nothing out of it. But if we have food and clothing, we will be content with that. Those who want to get rich fall into temptation and a trap and into many foolish and harmful desires that plunge people into ruin and destruction. For the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil. Some people, eager for money, have wandered from the faith and pierced themselves with many griefs. But you, man of God, flee from all this and pursue righteousness, godliness, faith, love, endurance and gentleness. Fight the good fight of the faith. Take hold of the eternal life to which you were called when you made your good confession in the presence of many witnesses. In the sight of God, who gives life to everything, and of Christ Jesus, who, while testifying before Pontius Pilate, made the good confession. I charge you to keep this command without spot or blame until the appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ, which God will bring about in his own time. God the blessed and the only ruler, the King of kings and Lord of lords, who alone is immortal and who lives in unapproachable light, whom no one has seen or can see. To him be honour and might forever. Amen. Command those who are rich in this present world not to be arrogant, nor to put their hope in wealth, which is so uncertain, but to put their hope in God, who richly provides us with everything for our enjoyment. Command them to do good, to be rich in good deeds, and to be generous and willing to share. In this, there, in this way, they will lay up treasures for themselves as a firm foundation for the coming age, so that they may take hold of the life that is truly life. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand if you're able for our second hymn, Breathe On Me, Breath of God, and it's Mission Praise number 67. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. And this morning's Gospel reading is taken from Luke chapter 16, verses 19 to 31. There was a rich man who was dressed in purple and fine linen and lived in luxury every day. At his gate was laid a beggar named Lazarus, covered with sores and longing to eat what fell from the rich man's table. Even the dogs came and licked his sores. The time came when the beggar died, and the angels carried him to Abraham's side. 
The rich man also died and was buried. In Hades, where he was in torment, he looked up and saw Abraham far away, with Lazarus by his side. So he called to him, Father Abraham, have pity on me, and send Lazarus to dip the tip of his finger in water, and cool my tongue, because I am in agony in this fire. But Abraham replied, Son, remember that in your lifetime you received your good things, while Lazarus received bad things. But now he is comforted here, and you are in agony. And besides all this, between us and you, a great chasm has been set in place, so that those who want to go from here to you cannot, nor can anyone cross over from there to us. He answered, Then I beg you, Father, send Lazarus to my family, for I have five brothers. Let him warn them, so that they will not also come to this place of torment. Abraham replied, They have Moses and the prophets. Let them listen to them. No, Father Abraham, he said, but if someone from the dead goes to them, they will repent. He said to them, If they do not listen to Moses and the prophets, they will not be convinced, even if someone rises from the dead. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. May the words I speak be, be those you want spoken. May the words we hear be those you want heard. And may we live our lives to your glory. Amen. Please sit down. Our Gospel reading this morning contains another of Jesus' parables. We've heard several of these over the past, past few Sundays. The lost sheep, the lost coin taking the lowest seat at a wedding feast. And parables were an extremely important part of Jesus' teaching, as they included examples from everyday life to help his audience understand the spiritual message he was trying to convey. And this morning's parable focuses on how our wealth might affect our relationship with God. And talking about money isn't easy, is it? And it was just as awkward for people 2,000 years ago as it is for us today. So Jesus tells the parable of the rich man and the beggar to get his point across. And including amongst those listening to this parable were some Pharisees, which made the advice Jesus was about to give even more crucial, as the Pharisees were generally quite wealthy people compared to the rest of the population. And they saw their wealth as a blessing from God for their righteousness. But through this parable, Jesus condemns the Pharisees for their love of money, and their lack of compassion for the poor. The rich man in the parable lives in the height of luxury. He wears clothes of fine linen, and he dresses in purple. And Jesus explicitly mentions the color purple, because purple cloth was the most expensive there was. It took the crushed shells of 10,000 sea snails just to make one gram of purple dye. So this man is very rich indeed. But in stark contrast, lying beside this rich man's gate is a penniless beggar, Lazarus. Lazarus is starving and covered in sores. People carry him to the rich man's gate every day, suggesting that he might also be crippled. And presumably they're hoping that at some point the rich man will take pity on him. Lazarus, Lazarus has a miserable time lying there day after day, dogs coming past and licking his sores. And yet, even though he passes right next to Lazarus every single time he leaves and returns home, despite his great wealth, the rich man appears oblivious to Lazarus' existence and does nothing to help him. Does he really not see him, or is he perhaps choosing not to see him? But someone does see Lazarus. God sees him. He even knows his name. Lazarus is precious to God. And when both men die, it's Lazarus who finds comfort in heaven, alongside Abraham, whilst the rich man goes to Hades, where he suffers great torment. The rich man's puzzled. Surely his wealth and riches were a blessing from God, so why is he in hell whilst Lazarus is in heaven? And the rich man pleads with Lazarus to help him, to relieve him of his torment. And this really shows the arrogance of this rich man, doesn't it? In life, he never did anything to help Lazarus, yet in death, he's pleading with him to help him. 
So Abraham reminds the rich man that he's already received so many good things whilst Lazarus was, su was suffering. The rich man then changes tack. He tells Abraham that if Lazarus can't help him, then surely he can go and warn his five brothers so that they won't suffer the same agonizing fate as him. But Abraham won't be moved. If the brothers have failed to listen, if they fail to understand how God wants them to live their lives, then they're not going to listen to someone who has risen from the dead. It's their interpretation of the scripture that is blocking their eyes and ears to God's message of love and compassion. And Paul's first letter to Timothy also deals with this thorny problem of wealth and how it might prevent us from living our lives according to God's example. Timothy is a leader at the newly founded Christian church in Ephesus. There are a lot of wealthy people in Ephesus. It's an inland harbour and it's at the crossroads of numerous trading routes. So consequently, many of its church members are rich. So Paul is telling Timothy to remind these wealthier members of the church in Ephesus that we bring nothing into the world and can take nothing out of it and that with wealth comes responsibilities. Timothy should therefore instruct them to do good deeds, to be generous and to be willing to share. In this way, they will gain riches of a different sort in heaven. The rich man in Jesus' parable didn't go to hell because he was rich, but because he was selfish. He failed to feed Lazarus or to take him in and care for him. The rich man was hard-hearted despite his great blessings. And the point that both Jesus and Paul are trying to make is that it's not the amount of money that people have that's the issue. It's the way in which they use it. Wealth can become problematic when it stops us from seeing the real world, when it shields our eyes from the harsh glare of suffering, when it prevents us from feeling other people's pain, when it prevents us from showing love and compassion to those in need. In Jesus' parable about, rich, about the rich man and Lazarus, the rich man was probably quite a nice person. He simply failed to notice the beggar who lay at his own front gate every day. And it's possibly even harder for us today to be aware of all the suffering that exists in the world. This was brought home quite harshly to me last Sunday when I travelled down to London for the first time in about three years. And I was absolutely shocked at how many homeless people there were on the streets of our capital city. There seemed far more than when I was last there. So when I got home, I did a bit of research and discovered that homelessness in London is indeed rising. It increased by 16% just in the last year. And that made me think, have I been just like the rich man in Jesus' parable, living my own comfortable life here in Macclesfield, not going into large cities because of COVID, not seeing poverty and need at first hand? Have I started to become blind to the reality of what's been happening elsewhere? And what Jesus is trying to do through this parable is to remind us all to keep checking that we're not becoming complacent, to check that we're truly hearing God's message of love and compassion, to check that we're really seeing the needy in our own communities and farther afield. Farther afield. Maybe we're not coming face to face with suffering in our daily lives, but are we still demonstrating the practical, caring love that we, as followers of Christ, are called to show? Amen. Thank you, Linda. So let's now stand and affirm our faith in the words of the Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. Of all that is seen and unseen, we believe in the one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. 
He has sent me to heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who was spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated for our intercession. The response to our prayers today is the usual response, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us pray. All our needs are God's concerns. Let us pray to him now. Father God, make us a listening church, welcoming to the hesitant, encouraging to the young, sensitive to differences and attentive to needs. Give us willing hearts, hands and voices, with which to respond to your word. Lord, in your mercy, yeah. hear our prayer. God of Lazarus, you hear the cry of all who live in poverty and hunger. Help us to create a just and righteous world. Give wisdom to those in government and help us to notice where there is need and to make us open-hearted in charitable giving. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. God of rich and poor, make us a responsible community, supporting our neighbours and friends, sharing one another's sorrows and joys, and opening our homes and our hearts to your love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of hope, as we remember those who have asked for prayers, take their needs and provide for them. Take their wounds and heal them. Take their suffering and comfort them. And we pray especially today for June Batty's Aunt Lily. We pray for Rick James and for David Carus. And in a moment of silence, we name in our hearts anyone known to us who is in need of your healing touch. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of eternal glory, as we call to mind those who have died, may they know the welcoming of your love into eternal joy. And we pray for your comfort for families who are grieving. We pray especially today for the royal family as they continue to mourn the death of the Queen. We also pray for Lawrence's brother-in-law's father, Jim Carus, and his family. And in the quiet that follows, we, pr we pray for those who we ha may have lost and are still grieving for. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Would you please stand? <laughs> Accept the peace that our Lord gives. The deep peace of the pe Prince of Peace be with you and about you. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And, and also, also with, with you. Let's share that with each other and with those folks at home looking on these. Please with you, Liz. <laughs>
sing, we sing our offertory hymn, Rejoice of the Lord is King, number 576. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to set before you, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become to us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to set before you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become to us the cup of salvation. Blessed be God forever. The Lord is here. His Spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is indeed right. It is our duty and our joy at all times and in all places to give you thanks and praise. Holy Father, Heavenly King, Almighty and Eternal God, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, for he is your living word. Through him you have created all things from the beginning and formed us in your own image. Through him you have freed us from the slavery of sin, giving him to be born of a woman and to die upon the cross. You raised him from the dead and exalted him to your right hand on high. Through him you have sent upon us your holy and life-giving spirit and made us a people for your own possession. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Accept our praises, Heavenly Father, through your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. And as we follow his example and obey his command, grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us his body and his blood, who in the same act that he was betrayed took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, 
This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way after supper, he took the cup and gave him thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of a new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Therefore, Heavenly Father, we remember his offering of himself made once for all upon the cross. We proclaim his mighty resurrection <coughs> and glorious ascension. We look for the coming of your kingdom, and with this bread and this cup we make the memorial of Christ your Son, our Lord. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Accept through him our great high priest, this our sacrifice of thanks and praise. And as we eat and drink these holy gifts in the presence of your divine majesty, renew us by your spirit, inspire us with your love, and unite us in the body of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Through him and, and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, with all who stand before you in earth and heaven, we worship you, Father Almighty, in songs of everlasting praise. Blessing and honour and glory and power be yours for ever and ever. Amen. We sit on kneel for the Lord's Prayer. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share. Draw near with faith, receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ which he gave for you, and his blood which he shed for you. Eat and drink in the moments that he died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
body and blood of Christ given for you. The body and blood of Christ given for you. The body and blood of Christ given for you. The body and blood of Christ. God of all mercy, in this Eucharist you have set aside our sins and given us your healing. Grant that we who are made whole in Christ may bring that healing to this broken world. In the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. Now, Master Church Warden, have we have any notices? Not a lot, but. Can I assume that the bottles of wine out there are a vicar appreciation? <laughs> if you spend lots of money, certainly. <laughs> no? So, thank you very much, Simon and Linda and Liz, for coming in and doing the music for us. Um, there are, I hope you've picked up your notice sheet if you didn't receive one. And there is a letter about the future of the churches together in Macclesfield, the progress so far. If you're interested, to do pick up one of those as well. Is it craft group tomorrow on the fourth Sunday, fourth Monday of the month? I think it is. It should be. Yeah, right. <laughs> it's second and fourth, I think yeah. you decided. Then you didn't clash with August Bank holidays. Um, Thank you very much indeed to Rosemary and Karen and Beryl for all those donations and for setting up the, and, and everybody else of course for all the donations as well, for setting up for the coffee morning. I'm really sorry it's a bit coming and going with people with injections and I've got to beetle off for mine at 11.27 um, and Beryl's there at the moment and Lawrence have got his as well. Um, but hopefully, I'm sure we can all spend lots of money. Unfortunately, you can buy raffle tickets and because the raffle tickets are, prizes are numbered, you can just leave your tickets behind. You haven't got to choose something. <laughs> so thank you very much. And obviously, Lawrence is wanting to say something as well. <laughs> I just wanted to expand a little on what Gail mentioned about the um, future ministry of uh, the Anglican churches in, in the Macclesfield Town Centre. Um, not forgetting our friends in other denominations as well. You've had a, I hope you've all managed to pick up this little briefing note. Those of you who receive the news sheet electronically will also get a copy that way as well. But you may remember a couple of years ago the Archdeacon had some open meetings which didn't really take the matter any further. He's passed it over to the lay leadership of the parishes concerned and we are working under the chairmanship of Pitt Moscrop, who is very much involved with the Hope Centre and is also a member of Holy Trinity Hurstfield. Um, there's a little working group uh, which has one person from each parish concerned. And the parishes are here, Henbury, Upton Priory, Holy Trinity, St Peter, St Paul's, St Barnabas and St Michael's. I don't think I've missed anybody out. Um, it's about eight or nine, I think it should. All saints, all saints. All saints. Yes, I'm sorry. Sorry, all saints. I got you. Um, so we have a, we have a representative from each of those parishes, and I'm the representative from this parish to uh, 
put, to, to put together some ideas as to how this might look in the future. In addition to that working group, there's a consultative group, which is two further people from each parish. And the working group, when they've thought of some radical ideas, will be discussing with the, the wider group to see how that sort of reflects with what is a more wider feeling in the parish. The intention is that something will happen this time by summer next year. I was going to say Easter, but we slipped a couple of months over the summer holidays already. <laughs> but we, we do have a number of meetings scheduled for um, between now and Christmas, in which time we hope to get some positive ideas as to how we can manage ministry patterns in, in the town centre parishes, which I've just listed. Um, we are a united benefice. So um, it's Bob, isn't it? Bob, yeah. Yeah. Bob Tom's church warden at um, Hendry is on the consultative group with Linda. And their working group representative is Patrick, who I only know is Patrick. Patrick McGuire. Patrick McGuire, thank you. Um, our reps are Charlie, who might, might give us a wave, but he's hiding behind his photograph. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and Sue Harrison. Um, so there will be the, our wider consultation group. And uh, they, they will meet on October the 13th if they'd like to make a note in their diary. But uh, that's all. Was that two minutes or longer, Gail? <laughs> So we come now to our final hit, number 109. Crown him with many crowns.
peace of the presence of God fill your life and be at work within you. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. his heart.